Hello and welcome to this first webinar in an ESG series where we're going to zoom in on each one of the three letters E, S and G. For today, the topic is environmental and we've chosen to discuss the topic of deforestation and its link to climate change. During the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow last year, East Capital Group decided to sign the investor-led initiative um, and the we signed the letter, the Financial Sector Commitment Letter on Eliminating Commodity-Driven Deforestation. To dive deeper into this topic, I have invited Rosemary Lozano Mantilla, who is in charge of responsible and sustainable investment strategies at our partner firm in Latin America, Credit Corp Capital Asset Management. Previously, she has worked as a consultant at the Global Impact Investing Network in New York, and she's also been a portfolio manager and investment strategy analyst at Credit Corp and BCP in Lima. Rosemary is a CFA charge holder, and since 2020, she uh, also became a certified ESG analyst by the European Federation of Financial Analyst Societies. Good morning, Rosemary. I'm very excited to have you joining us today. How are you? Great, thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. I've also invited Tim Umberger, who is one of the partners here at East Capital. Tim has been working 15 years with investments and engagement and in emerging and frontier markets, and he works as a senior portfolio advisor on the investment team today. Uh, it's a great pleasure, Tim, to have you here today. How are you? Thank you, Hannah. The pleasure is mine. Uh, to kickstart today's session and before maybe jumping into deforestation, uh, I know it's a huge topic that probably deserves its own webinar, but Rosemary, can you try to give us a little bit of an overview of the sustainable investment landscape in Latin America? Sure. So um, the region has the, its own challenges, right? It's um, associated with industries such as oil and gas, mining, agriculture, extractive industries that have their uh, exposure, a higher exposure to environmental and social risks, right? So uh, in addition to those challenges, uh, the region is not as advanced as some developed markets may be in terms of corporate sustainability, including disclosure regulation and reporting. So. Um, that those challenges uh, on top of the other ones, right, make the the, um, the ability of investors to implement responsible uh, investing strategies um, a bit difficult, but uh, as, as uh, it's in every part of the world. So um, uh, what we have seen in the last couple of years is that uh, the, there's a growing interest among institutional investors in the region. Uh, that they are willing to and they are working very hard to incorporate ESG into their investment processes. This momentum has been built by the hard work that the PRI signatories are, are doing in the region. Um, and we have seen the number of PRI signatories uh, in 2020 and 2021 growing uh, disproportionately in uh, LATAM X Brazil. And the good thing about this, this growing interest is not just about the number of the signatories, but it's also about the quality of the work that we're doing. So we are a very committed community and we're working really hard to try to understand the challenges that, that, that our region faces. We're working to improve our ESG integration capabilities. Uh, for instance, we have this uh, a working group uh, to assess climate change risks and opportunities from a local in the local context uh, and we're also working really hard with performing collaborative engagements with companies to improve disclosure and also uh, promoting um, standards and frameworks such as TCFD or uh, GRI global global standards right so that's on a summary yeah it's really helpful and I think it's it's uh, very encouraging to hear that change is coming and then that hard work seems to be paying off um, if we 
then go back to environment um, and the topic of deforestation. Um, I think uh, we've heard about this, but not too many people are aware of, you know, why it's so important and, and especially the, the link to deforest uh, to sorry to the climate. So can you help uh, me and the audience understand why deforestation is such a key issue to address to deal with the client, the, the climate? Sure. So deforestation is basically the destruction, right, of ecosystems and natural capital. So it, it represents a change in the use of land and it contributes to climate change because we're losing carbon sinks when there is deforestation. So um, the IPCC has estimated that uh, deforestation may have contributed to global greenhouse gas emissions between 10 and 20 percent. So there is a link uh, between uh, deforestation and climate change. We also know that deforestation contributes to biodiversity loss because, as I was mentioning, right, ecosystems are altered. So these two, biodiversity loss and climate change, are these the twin crises that we're referring in the, in, and, and we know that if we want to stop uh, climate change, we need to start uh, stop deforestation, right? So uh, there is scientific um, consensus around that. Uh, we need to uh, transition to sustainable management of forests and land use. And we also know that nature and natural capital uh, are among the set of solutions that we can look at to help us mitigate climate change, right? But we need these solutions to be implemented properly. So it's not only about carbon offsets, it, they, have to be, uh, they have to be properly implemented so that they really work, right? So, so we, we used to think, sure. No, sorry, go ahead. So I, I was I was going to mention as well that uh, deforestation is key when we think about climate and when we think about environmental issues, uh, as you were mentioning. But I also think that we should not lose sight of the social aspects because they are all interconnected, right? So we know that climate change is going to have effects on, on populations. We know as well that deforestation has those. There are issues between human rights, lives and livelihoods of local communities that are affected by the loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services. So I, I think that the the, re, the answer to why is deforestation a key issue, it's, it's much more broader than just thinking about uh, a specific issue, right? Uh, we, we need to see like the whole system and, and all the complexities that this brings. So what can the companies then do to address this key issues? Is there like, I know it's probably not like one clear answer, but do you have anything that you can share with us that you think, where you think companies can actually uh, do a difference? Sure, so I, I think that uh, if companies have a response, companies and investors, we, we do have a responsibility here and we also have a, an opportunity. And I think that uh, every single stakeholder, uh, governments, social society, civil society, uh, sorry, uh, we also have those those responsibilities, right? So in particular for companies, uh, I would say the first thing is ensuring that we are not harming, right? We're not harming nature capital. We're not, uh, we are complying with regulation and uh, we're ensuring that our operations in the industry and the sector where we belong um, are taking uh, a due, a due um, uh, care of not harming the environment. So um, this may take different forms depending of, on the industry and the sector for the company. For instance, it could mean implementing policies and processes to monitor the supply chains, right? You can, uh, certain industries can use commodity certifications to ensure that they are not using uh, commodities linked to deforestation. Those are a, a couple of examples. Uh, for the financial sector, this may, uh, it, this may mean to have the policies in place for the for the loan portfolios, their investment portfolios, right? So uh, it, it, I think that every single company from the, the sector where they are located, they can have a, a different way to approach to this do not harm uh, first uh, step that I would say. Then there's the other part, right? Um, going beyond that, going beyond that, the risk mitigation. 
I would say that the main thing that we as companies and investors can do is to develop our understanding of the challenge. As I was mentioning, it's not a, an, an easy issue, uh, and it's an issue that it's going to be easy to solve. Uh, we need to, to learn about uh, the causes, the effects, the links, and, and I think that guidance from seeking guidance from scientists uh, and also valuing local uh, knowledge and traditional knowledge from indigenous uh, communities can help us. Right. Uh, and, and we need to think about these challenges uh, from the double materiality perspective, because we are used to think about the, the financial assessment. Right. And we and it's important to think about the financial materiality. We all know that climate change and the loss of ecosystems and deforestation are going to have effects uh, that are going to uh, uh, impact the, the financial position of companies. Right, uh, you can see loss of livelihoods that are related to climate change. But we also have to think about the the other the, the other side of double materiality, the impact that we're generating in the in the environment, in the planet, in the and for society. Right, so it's a bit balancing both. That way we can move from the risk mitigation to also start contributing to the solution. Right, seek where are the business opportunities that can help the private sector, private companies, and investors to help uh, finding the solutions. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, Tim, its Capital Group has been working for a very long time uh, to, you know, for a positive change through engaging with the companies uh, we uh, have in our portfolios. Uh, with your experience, can you say there's a certain method uh, when it comes to specifically uh, emerging market that uh, will more likely generate positive outcomes of these engagements? Yes, I think there is. I think that the best method is always, at least in our experience, um, what I call personal collaborative engagement. Uh, so let me explain. Personal because we engage with other people from the companies and uh, the more they know us, the more they trust us, the easier it becomes to get the message across and work together towards the goals. And this is why at East Capital we have actually portfolio managers and analysts uh, themselves leading the engagements. Sending a dry letter to the management and hope for action will not cut it. Companies like to engage directly um, and our role as investors is not only to require, uh, but also support these processes. Uh, and this brings us to the collaborative part, by which I mean, you know, sharing knowledge, brainstorming together about how to improve things based on best practices, but of course allowing for their own concepts, you know, for, for the companies to develop their own concepts, ways of dealing with, with, with things. And if we get to this stage, then the process has become very powerful as both sides and by both sides, meaning investors and the companies themselves embrace it, observe the progress, more people in the organization get involved and it creates a positive circular effect. Uh, we engaged in this way with some of the largest companies in emerging markets uh, with very tangible results. Yeah, I know um, one of the engagements we've had is uh, with Bradesco Bank in Brazil on the topic of deforestation. Can you just give us some background on this, Tim? Well, on Bradesco, the, well, Rosemary mentioned that the, the deforestation is a big topic, right? And Bradesco was part of our sustainable global emerging market strategy. The basis for the assessment uh, of ESG um, uh, issues is our ESG scorecard with SDGs fully integrated now. Hence, we're obviously looking in depth into sustainability, including supply chain, and this helps us to determine the key issues. Now, when you think about uh, which banks in the world are most exposed to deforestation, uh, it was pretty obvious that the big bank like Bradesco would have a big footprint, but with unclear disclosures and practices around it. So for us, it became an obvious big and important team where we felt we could engage with them. 
Uh, in practice, it was our partners from Credit Corp who did it. Uh, they were obviously or are better positioned through their no local network, through the local knowledge, the things that I discussed uh, previously, uh, but they have done so uh, within East Capital framework, if you will. Yeah, um, so one of the one of the things that we really like uh, is, as you say, having boots on the ground and, and you know, the local network. So I'm going to turn to you, Rosemary, with the boots on the ground. Can you maybe highlight some of the challenges with this specific case uh, than with the Bradesco Bank? Sure. So the as, as Tim was mentioning, uh, we were conducting the, the engagement. So we, we share some ideas with Tim and, and the East Capital team uh, about what we wanted the company, what we wanted to tra um, transmit to the company, right? So the first thing was um, a deep dive into their policies, their processes, and we just, we realized they were, um, they, are, they have really good policies in place. They were complying with regulation. Everything was, was fine there, but there were some room to improve transparency but uh, for the local, uh, compared to their local peers, they were already in a in a better position. So what we discovered when we were doing this conversation with the banks around how to, to address deforestation risks, um, we realized that the, the, the magnitude of the challenge uh, arose mainly from the beef sector, which is where they have this, this high uh, concentration. And the deforestation risks for this sector, the beef sector in particular, arise from the indirect supply chain, which is hard to monitor and as such is difficult to include in the scope of the bank's policies, right? So it was very interesting to have the conversation with the banks, highlighting these risks, asking if they have uh, already considered them and we, really, we, we felt that they had a really very open position about the complexity of the challenge. And we, we were also able to discuss that some companies were trying to do some, uh, implement some technology development around to monitor their, their indirect supply chain. And uh, the, the banks were looking at the, a way to accompany corporates in these new developments, right? This was all incipient, but uh, I think that the willingness to learn about how to overcome the challenge of indirect supply was, was already there. Uh, in fact, Bradesco has, uh, with two other Brazilian banks, they have a plan for the sustainable development of the Amazon, which is um, includes a set of measures. Uh, and one of these is to achieve zero deforestation in the meat sector. So um, they, have, they are strengthening their, their processes for diligence and so on. And I, I think that um, they also have this, the, the, I think that the most important part is that, as I was mentioning, the importance of having expert knowledge. They have a group of experts that are the one de leading the design of the plan and the activities and so on. So I think that the, the engagement is going to continue um, because this, as I, was, as I mentioned, this is a, a, a systemic issue, right? And in 2021, we invited Bradesco and we also engaged with Bank the Banco de Brasil and we invited them to participate in a pilot that CDP was conducting to um, to create a, a pilot a, a questionnaire for the for forest for the financial institutions. And we were very pleased that the banks both answered our request very fast and they committed to participate. So uh, CDP thanked us and, and we were uh, very happy to see that that, that willingness to, to work toward this. No. So I, I know uh, sometimes I, I, when I realize the magnitude of the challenge and that this may seem like baby steps, right? Uh, because like, we are not doing what we should be doing faster enough. Uh, so I, I, I'm curious and I always want to, I enjoy talking with him about how does he sees this around in other regions, uh, if these are like baby steps and, and there are other things that, that we could do faster or, or to improve this, this response. Yeah, Chip, what's your thoughts on, on, on this? Um, as Rosemary is saying, it's, it's really a huge issue in the region and, and 
uh, we can start having this conversation. And it, it sounds like the the banks are starting to definitely realise uh, the magnitude of, of the challenge ahead, but they they want to do uh, they want to you know improve and and uh, work for positive uh, change here. Uh, what's your thoughts, Tim, having been around for for a while in the in the industry and you've seen countries and companies um, changing? Well, I think that, uh, you know, in emerging markets in general, and Brazil is certainly not an exception, you know, we have different stages through which the corporate, the corporates are going, uh, including and especially in ESG from kind of, you know, being a topic that is initially even a little bit annoying for them, I would say, to the stage where they realize the magnitude and just trying to figure out how to tackle it to the stage when the first work has been done and they see how and realize themselves how important it is. So, you know, we, we get and I think that we are probably in Brazil somewhere in the cusp of this where investors don't necessarily need to push anymore, but rather to, you know, work together with the companies to find the ways uh, to then probably the final stage uh, where absolutely everyone is on the same page uh, working towards a positive change. And uh, on this particular topic, you know, it's it's maybe more relevant for, for Brazil, but I mean, you know, we have in other emerging markets, we have uh, issues with the banks, you know, and uh, fossil fuel lending and the likes. And I mean, it's, you know, the topic is slightly different, but the processes through which we are going uh, are very much alike. Uh, so, I mean, I think that we are now here uh, on the same page in understanding how big of a topic this is and uh, the banks are clearly working towards this, including, as Rosemary mentioned, uh, you know, uh, through the supply chain, which is a difficult part of this in particular. And I think it really helps to uh, speak about these things as well and, and raise awareness among the investor, investor community uh, about what's going on. Uh, it's not always 100% uh, clear uh, for someone who's just, you know, looking at a fund or, or um, uh, maybe just even um, an allocation within their fund and, and it's not fully clear what's going on uh, behind the scenes all the time. So it's really helpful that you're here uh, sharing this uh, in a very transparent way today. Thank you so much both. Tim, to wrap up uh, today's webinar, um, I was wondering if you could try to summarise from a portfolio management uh, perspective why you think env environmental related uh, matters are important for, um, for your portfolio uh, or any anyone who's managing portfolio, why we should care about these things? Uh, well, if I start with the risk management first, uh, you know, from a top down point of view, uh, what matters for the ecology in terms of matters for the economy of a certain country or at least certain provinces. Uh, if environment is suffering, then economy, I, the companies are suffering and the businesses ultimately suffering as well, right? So from the risk management perspective, uh, it is very important to know exactly how your companies are exposed. And in the case of Bradesco, you know, we went from kind of reading some articles somewhere that they have big impact on deforestation as a headline. And then for us as investors, we need to go from this headline to as detailed as possible understanding of what this really means for their business. And I think that as always, you know, the, the more of the more you know about the challenging parts of certain businesses, the more convinced you are or not eventually of whether they can deal with this, whether they can overcome this uh, in a good way. Uh, in terms of opportunities, this might, might sound a bit technical, of course, but you know, if we can help the companies becoming leaders in certain fields, you know, with big disclosure, how they're handling key topics is this one, uh, you know, this will eventually set some companies apart. Uh, and ultimately, more investors will probably pick them 
I mean, Rosemary mentioned that ESG investing is on the rise in LATAM as well. And hence, in theory, at least, uh, the best companies in this regard should command the premium, which is then the alpha element of engagement, if you will. Uh, and I would say lastly, but of course equally important, uh, these are hugely rewarding processes. And uh, if you look on our sustainable global emerging market strategy, also has an investment objective to positively contribute to the uh, sustainable development goals. And with this type of this type of engagements, of course, make our work uh, very meaningful. Thank you. I think that's you know great words to to wrap up and 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 probably end uh, today's webinar with. Uh, I'd like to thank you both a lot for joining me today. Um, it's been extremely informative for myself. I hope the audience agree with me. If you would like to know more about this or if you would like to know more about us and what we're doing, uh, please reach out to either myself or anyone else on the IR team here at uh, East Capital Group. Uh, we're also happy to set you in connection with uh, with um, Rosemary if you'd like to further discuss with her. Um, and we're going to be doing more of these um, ESG webinars, as I mentioned. The next one we're holding is towards the end of April, uh, when we are zooming in on the S as in social. So please stay tuned for that, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.